For centuries, the Nile River has sustained life across Northeast Africa, nourishing fields, fueling economies, and shaping civilizations. But as populations grow, the climate shifts, and development pressures mount. The competition to control its waters has intensified. In Ethiopia, a bold vision emerged to build a massive hydroelectric dam that could transform the nation's energy future and drive economic growth. The scale would be unprecedented, Africa's largest dam, demanding engineering ingenuity, billions in investment, and political resolve. From the outset, the project sparked regional unease. Downstream countries, particularly Egypt and Sudan, feared that the dam could give Ethiopia the power to control the Nile's flow, raising concerns over water security, dam safety, and long-term cooperation. Yet despite opposition, Ethiopia pressed ahead. Built on one of the Nile's most strategic arteries, this megastructure has now become a defining symbol of pride, power, and controversy as it has reached its completion. Today, let's delve into the $5 billion Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Nile River, stretching over 6,600 kilometers across 11 countries, has long shaped the political and economic lifeblood of Northeast Africa. Among its two main tributaries, the Blue Nile, originating in Ethiopia's highlands, contributes roughly 85% of the Nile's total volume during the rainy season. Yet despite this vital role, Ethiopia has historically been excluded from major decisions on the river's use. This exclusion stems from colonial-era water-sharing treaties, most notably the 1929 and 1959 agreements, which granted the majority of Nile waters to Egypt and Sudan while ignoring upstream nations like Ethiopia. These outdated accords have long been a source of frustration across the Nile Basin and fueled Ethiopia's demand for a more equitable and inclusive framework. Against this backdrop, Ethiopia launched an ambitious project in the early 2000s to build a massive hydroelectric dam that would address its severe energy shortage and assert its rightful role in managing the Nile's future. Spearheaded by Prime Minister Meles Zenawi, the dam was envisioned as more than just infrastructure. It was a symbol of sovereignty, resilience, and progress. Initially known as the Millennium Dam, it was later renamed the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam to reflect its broader significance. The project would go on to become Africa's largest hydropower dam, marking a new chapter in Ethiopia's pursuit of development and regional influence. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is a roller-compacted concrete gravity dam that spans 1,780 meters in length and rises to a height of 145 to 175 meters. It is built on the Blue Nile's narrow gorges, a location chosen for its ideal topography and geology. The main structure consists of roughly 10.7 million cubic meters of concrete, an immense volume that required an efficient and rapid construction methodology. Roller compacted concrete was selected for its cost effectiveness and ability to be placed in thick, horizontal layers without requiring traditional formwork or curing times. A notable feature of the project is the Auxiliary Saddle Dam, a 5-kilometer long, 50-meter high concrete-faced rockfill structure designed to help contain the vast reservoir. Together, the main and saddle dams impound the Blue Nile to form a reservoir with a total storage capacity of approximately 74 billion cubic meters, comparable to the volume of Lake Tana. Ethiopia's largest natural lake. Powered by 13 massive turbines, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will generate over 5,000 megawatts of electricity, translating to an estimated 16 terawatt hours annually, enough to power over 40 million average African homes, or supply Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania combined for an entire year. This marks a transformative leap in regional energy supply significantly enhancing Ethiopia's power production capacity and positioning it as a net energy exporter. The dam also incorporates sophisticated hydrological and safety features. It has multiple spillways for flood management, 
including a primary gated spillway and emergency outlets that were expanded mid-construction in response to downstream concerns about water surges. Seismic design considerations were integrated into the foundation to mitigate risks from geologic activity. Engineers paid close attention to sedimentation control given the high silt content of the Blue Nile. Specialized sediment traps and bypass systems were installed to extend the dam's operational lifespan and maintain downstream ecological balance. The total cost of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is estimated at $5 billion. In a rare move for a project of this scale, Ethiopia chose to fund the dam largely through domestic means, launching a national campaign that mobilized citizen contributions, bond purchases, and diaspora support. This national effort became a symbol of unity and independence. While a $1 billion loan from China's Exim Bank supported turbine and electrical purchases, the dam remains one of the few major infrastructure projects in the Global South, financed primarily from within. Construction officially began in April 2011 under the supervision of WeBuild Group, an Italian firm with extensive experience in large-scale hydropower projects. Despite the project's technical complexity and logistical challenges, civil works proceeded at an impressive pace, especially considering Ethiopia's decision to manage the project independently. The Blue Nile was successfully diverted in May 2013, and by 2016, key sections of the dam's concrete structure were taking shape. Progress slowed at times due to internal disputes, managerial turnover, and occasional technical recalibrations. In 2018, the project's lead engineer, Simenu Bekela, widely regarded as a national hero, was found dead under mysterious circumstances, casting a shadow over the project's morale. His successor, Kifle Horo, helped refocus the team and steer the project back on track. The first of the dam's turbines began generating electricity in February 2022, marking a pivotal milestone. Subsequent turbines were brought online in stages, while the reservoir was filled in phases over four rainy seasons. In October 2024, Ethiopia announced that the final stage of reservoir filling was complete, despite protests from Egypt and Sudan. By mid-2025, the dam's construction was declared fully complete, with plans for a formal inauguration set for September 2025. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has faced several challenges. A key social issue has been the resettlement of thousands from the reservoir area. While the government reported providing compensation and relocation, independent assessments have raised concerns about the adequacy of support. Environmental groups have also warned of reduced sediment flow and disrupted seasonal flooding, which could negatively impact agriculture and fisheries in Sudan. Situated near the East African Rift, the dam faces seismic risks that have been addressed through structural reinforcements, though these require continuous monitoring. Additionally, climate variability, such as irregular rainfall and droughts, may affect reservoir management and power reliability. These challenges underscore the need for adaptive water governance and stronger regional cooperation. At the same time, the dam stands at the heart of Ethiopia's ambition to become a middle-income country. By doubling national electricity output, it addresses an energy deficit affecting over 60% of the population and supports economic growth in agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Regionally, the dam positions Ethiopia as an emerging energy exporter, with power agreements underway with Sudan, Kenya, and Djibouti. It also supports clean, renewable energy generation, reduces flooding in Sudan, and improves water regulation during dry seasons. Beyond its utility, the dam is a symbol of national pride, reflecting Ethiopia's resilience and determination to shape its future. Despite its domestic benefits, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has provoked intense diplomatic disputes, particularly with Egypt. With over 90% of its freshwater supply coming from the Nile, Egypt considers any upstream interference a direct existential threat. A massive dam like this has deepened fears that, 
Without a binding agreement, Ethiopia could unilaterally restrict or delay the river's flow, especially during droughts, potentially cutting off vital supplies essential to Egypt's agriculture, drinking water, and industry. Since 2011, Egypt has lobbied aggressively in regional and international forums to delay or halt the dam's progress, arguing that a legally binding agreement on water release schedules is essential to safeguard downstream flows. Sudan, though initially supportive due to potential flood control and electricity imports, has adopted a more cautious stance over time. Sudan has expressed concerns about the dam's impact on its own dams, sedimentation rates, and water management systems. Egypt and Sudan have both called for a trilateral agreement mediated by external actors, including the African Union, the United Nations, and even the United States. Ethiopia, however, has maintained its right to unilaterally develop the Blue Nile, citing sovereignty and fair resource use. Despite multiple negotiation rounds, no binding agreement has been reached, leaving the dispute a complex geopolitical standoff tied to broader regional concerns. With construction complete and inauguration set for September 2025, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam now enters its most critical phase, long-term operation. Its future impact will hinge not just on electricity generation, but on how effectively water release and reservoir management are handled. Without a binding agreement between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan, these operational decisions could heighten regional tensions. Yet the dam also offers a chance for cooperation. Its vast capacity could anchor broader integration in energy, water management, and regional trade. Joint monitoring and transparent data sharing could turn a source of conflict into one of collaboration. Ultimately, the dam's legacy will depend not only on engineering success, but on whether it inspires trust and diplomacy across borders. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam may be Ethiopia's greatest infrastructure achievement, but its true test lies in what the future holds. Can the Nile become a river of shared progress, or will it remain a fault line of division? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.